Now, Iyad al-Baghdadi is a human rights activist, and he tweeted to confirm, yes, I was a direct source for Bezos' investigation team. Over the past six weeks, my team and I were working overtime on the story, but held off on publishing anything. There is still a lot we can't publish, but we continue to work on this. Well, Iyad al-Baghdadi is joining us from Oslo now. Very good to have you with us on Al Jazeera. So, um, how did you come to be involved in this investigation? Well, thank you for having me, Elizabeth. Uh, very early on, after February 7th, that's when uh, Jeff Bezos published that uh, post on Medium in which he exposed the, the attempt to blackmail him. Um, I immediately noticed and I immediately started uh, putting together a team to start to look into uh, what might be behind this because it's, it was such a bizarre story and also a very explosive story. Um, so I posted some initial notes uh, a few days after that, and I believe it was February, uh, around before the mid of Feb middle of February, that uh, Bezos' team reached out. And we have been coordinating since then. We've been, uh, you know, uh, exchanging information. Of course, as you can imagine, uh, the most explosive part of uh, 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 the claims right now is the hacking, the electronic eavesdropping, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, but the investigation itself was much wider than this. It, it wasn't only about how they uh, came to possess the information, but why and, you know. And so when you say why, why do you think it is? Well, it is directly, as, as you mentioned in, in your introduction, it is directly uh, uh, linked to what happened with Jamal Khashoggi. As you can imagine, Jeff Bezos is a man who uh, owns the Washington Post, but he's also a man who is a businessman who was doing a lot of business he's in Saudi Arabia and planning to do even more business in Saudi Arabia. The richest man in the world, in fact. Absolutely. And of course, it was about uh, Jamal Khashoggi in the end. And, you know, it is, it, again, the Saudis have denied this, uh, the National Enquirer's onus as they acted lawfully in the reporting of this story. It is one thing, however unacceptable, you know, to hack the phones of human rights activists and dissidents, which Saudi Arabia um, has been reported to have done. But to hack Jeff Bezos's phone is another thing. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, like, uh, it, it's also the angle of uh, the Saudis being not very disciplined about their usage of, uh, of this kind of technology, uh, which is actually threatening. It's not only threatening to, you know, it's basically uh, really effectively it could start a cyber war where, where you know, even companies, you know, if this is legal, then it is a big problem. But also it's a problem, I, I should mention, for the technology companies that actually provide these kind of services, such as NSO and others, and you might notice uh, that for about a week now, before, ahead of Gavin De Becker's article on the Daily Beast, in which he exposed this, mm -hmm. uh, they have been, there has been a number of, uh, of reports, which I can only explain, which I can, I can only describe as PR. Uh, it's like they're, they're actually anticipating they're, they're probably they were anticipating something like this, and they wanted to kind of say that, you know, uh, we're not that insidious company that uh, that cooperates with, with dictators, but we're also saving lives some, somehow. Of course, you know, whether you believe them or not is another question. There are so many layers to the story, and just one of them is who owns the National Enquirer and who are they linked to, because they're also reported to be linked to the Saudis and uh, to... Um, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman's great ally, U.S. President Donald Trump. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So the, there is a well-established relationship between AMI. Uh, of course, the a AMI owns the National Enquirer. And really, the head of the National Enquirer is David Pecker. Uh, the second-hand man is, is a man called Dylan Howard. Uh, David Pecker has an established relationship with the Saudis going back to 2017, I believe. Uh, and it kind of escalated in 2018. So there is that, that, that relationship is uh, well established and there is also evidence, uh, uh, you know, pointing to an exchange, you know, there's, there's, there, it, was, it was a financially beneficial arrangement, mm -hmm. let's say, for ah. AMI. And the investigator, the chief um, investigator, has passed on the findings to the U.S. federal officials. Are you hopeful that they will investigate this? Well, absolutely. I mean, that was the, the end game. Uh, I would say, when it comes to uh, Gavin De Becker and his team. 
Uh, of course, I, I would like to mention that I was one source. I wasn't the only source. He spoke to a lot of people. And of course, he had his own experts. Uh, and he has his own access to different uh, different sources, of course. Uh, so so really, it's uh, this is what they're hoping. Uh, they're hoping to make this a legal problem in the end mm -hmm. for both AMI. Of course, the AMI is the immediate uh, uh, problem here, but also this is a, a, absolutely a PR problem also for the Saudis. Mr. Baghdadi, it's very good to have you with us on Al Jazeera to tell us more about this investigation. That is Iyad Al-Baghdadi, live in Oslo. Thank you. Thank you so much.